This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. It just doesn't seem fair. You shouldn't get plaudits from reviewers year after year saying you're one of the most improved phone brands without eventually becoming, you know, easily recommendable. But when it comes to smartphones, Sony is anything but easy. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is a very early first look at the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Yep, if you watched last week's video shot at Kennedy Space Center, this is the unreleased smartphone I teased behind all that pixelated blur, a phone I've been carrying for a little over two weeks. So why isn't this a full review? Well, <laughs> because even though it's being announced today, in May, the Xperia 1 Mark IV doesn't actually ship until September. That means this prototype Sony let me borrow is substantially undercooked. Simple stuff is just broken. You know, the screen doesn't stay off when I'm in a voice call. There's strange banding and color artifacts in dark areas of the display. And one of Sony's biggest new features isn't even loaded onto this unit yet. Nonetheless, I asked for an early sample because as a YouTuber, I tend to gravitate toward equipment that makes my life easier on the road. And Sony is the only company out there right now trying to distill an entire mobile production studio into a smartphone. It's not just that the cameras keep improving with each generation. The features surrounding those cameras keep getting upgrades as well. Take the screen. It still packs way more pixels than you're ever going to need, but now it's finally bright enough to see, even in outdoor settings, even through sunglasses. Between last week in Florida and this week in San Diego for the Qualcomm 5G Summit, my brightness slider has spent an awful lot of time maxed out. And if you're already wondering what that means for endurance, congratulations. You watch too many tech videos. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a critical consideration, and I'm happy to say Sony took it seriously. With the new 5,000 mAh battery, the One Mark IV survived the most brutal stress test imaginable. A space nerd like me using its cameras to document an entire day at Kennedy Space Center. 14 hours after I took it off the charger, it still had 11% left. Again, on a camera heavy day, with the display set to 120 Hz, with the brightness maxed out more often than not. And there's also the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which means I can plug in a wireless microphone for shots like these. Again, it's not just about the camera, it's about the tools you need to make the most out of it. And if you don't want to break out headphones for the playback, well, you're covered there too. By a pair of symmetrical speakers, complete with new drivers and enclosures with more power and better frequency response than before. And Sony already had some of the best speakers on a smartphone anyway. It's all crammed into a chassis that you could be forgiven for calling a little too familiar. As someone who values form just as much as function, and someone who frequently calls out the iPhone for iterative dullness, I can't exactly give Sony a pass here. This isn't the most exciting design, and to make matters worse, here in the States, we're only getting the black version. But at least it's repeating a design motif that's distinctive, with its stretched plank-like aspect ratio and its sheer-sided straightforwardness. On one of those sides, you'll find the two-stage shutter key that's always been there, and on the front and back, you'll find the Gorilla Glass Victus that hasn't. Toss in a lovely oleophobic satin finish, a notification LED, a SIM and micro SD tray that's easy to liberate with just a thumbnail, and Sony's default double dust and water resistance, and you've got enough pluses, I think, to negate the same old, same old design. Now, if it sounds like I'm buttering you up before a big letdown, congratulations. You watch too many Mr. Mobile videos, and thank you. I'll tell you why I'm a little bit tentative about this device right after a word from a sponsor who's actually helping me through some other letdowns right now. In a culture like ours, we work at our jobs, we work on our relationships, we work on our physical fitness. But too often, we don't work on our mental health. In honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
And if you're thinking, I don't need that, you know, I don't need therapy, I get it. <laughs> I said the same thing for most of my life. But somewhere in the roller coaster of the past two years, I realized that that wasn't true. That talking to friends wasn't enough. That I really needed a licensed therapist who was trained to listen and help better. Well, enter BetterHelp. It's customized online therapy, which means you can talk to one of over 20,000 specialists over phone, video calls, or even live text chat. You just fill out a quick questionnaire and you get matched in under 48 hours. Everything you share is confidential, and if you're not gelling with your therapist, that's fine. You can request a new one at any time. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline therapy, but you can also apply for financial aid during sign-up. They accept HSA benefits, and you can use my link to get 10% off your first month. Go to BetterHelp.com slash Mr. Mobile. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash M-R-M-O-B-I-L-E. Now, is it easy? Not always. No. Working on yourself is still work, and there's no overnight fix. But that's the case with most work worth doing, and personally, I'm glad I started. So, if you or someone you know is struggling, share the link below. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. That letdown that I promised before the break isn't a showstopper, it's mostly all in the timing. With four months to go before projected availability, this phone's camera system is still full of wrinkles. Noisy video with washed out colors, autofocus that doesn't work at all zoom levels, low light performance that's dubious at best, and exposure problems that range from merely washed out to, well, catastrophic. Sony's whole camera philosophy is unchanged. It wants to be able to get pictures right in camera, as they say, instead of relying on post-processing after the capture. Now, that's the opposite direction almost every other phone maker is going, and the result is a photographer's playground, a suite of manual features more extensive than you'll get anywhere else. The One Mark IV includes all the innovations of the past few years of Xperia, the rapid-fire burst mode, the periscope zoom, racking focus in Cinema Pro, eye autofocus, and to all that, it adds a new telephoto module, one that physically moves to give it what Sony calls the world's first true optical zoom on a smartphone. What that means is you should be able to push smoothly, mechanically, between 85 and 125 millimeter equivalent, or about 3.5x to 5.2x zoom, before the phone has to resort to digital cropping. Please note, the autofocus isn't finished on this version of the phone, so these results are not at all representative of a final build. But the trouble is, Sony has never managed to back up its manual mode feature packing with a truly excellent automatic shooting mode. Oh, it streamlined the software, made it easier to shoot in auto, and to be sure, it can turn out some real gems in an ideal setting. But put it in a challenging scenario, an overexposed subject in front of a Saturn V-sized background you really don't want to lose, and yeesh. I'll say once again that these samples are pre-release, that this is an unfinished prototype, but there's a reason I'm saying it anyway. It's because I've been reviewing Sony phones for years, and they've never been able to deliver the same effortless high dynamic range as the much cheaper Google Pixel, or the same zoom capabilities as the still cheaper Samsung Galaxy Ultra line. Now, Sony stands are already down in the comments screaming that that's not the point of an Xperia. And look, I, I respect all the added capabilities of Sony phones. What I'm suggesting is that maybe for the price Sony charges, we as consumers should expect both amazing manual features and amazing automatic performance. But the company just doesn't seem able or willing to give us both. Hi, Mid Ed at Mr. Mobile here. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be unwinding from the Qualcomm 5G Summit. But in the course of building this video, I found something interesting. I kept looking at the sample photos from the phone and realizing that while my complaints about low light performance and dynamic range stand, I loved so much of the output from this camera already in its three months or four months before release state. 
So I will say that if Sony manages to eke out just a little more processing prowess, this thing could really make it, particularly if you are part of the group I mentioned at the top, this vlogger who wants a whole studio in their pocket. I mean, look at this vlogging accessory that Sony sells alongside it. It's an absolute lifesaver in a situation where you really need the main cameras on the back, but you also need to see the shot to frame yourself up. I used this thing to shoot so much of that Asus Space Edition video, and just like when I reviewed the Pro-I, I'm going to miss this more than the phone itself when I have to give it all back. Now that's sold separately, but even if you just stick to the phone, there are other upgrades to cover here. Sony has finally improved its selfie camera this year, with better optics and 4K HDR, as well as new software to make it easier for gamers to stream from this phone. I just hope it doesn't overheat as easily as mine did when shooting video at Kennedy Space Center. And to the stable of video, photo, and cinema pro comes a new custom Sony app for 2022, Music Pro. The idea here is if you're a singer or a voice talent, you can record directly to the phone, which then uses a subscription cloud service to intelligently separate the vocal tracks from the music and process them separately as well. You get noise reduction, hiss and wind removal, special effects. In theory, you should be able to get a better final recording than you could ever get from a mobile microphone. This wasn't loaded onto my review unit, but I'm eager to test it given how often I find myself in hotel rooms wanting to record voiceover that's not full of echoes. The Xperia 1 Mark IV is expected to launch at just a penny shy of 1600 US dollars. Sure, that's a lot to ask for anything that's not a foldable, and most people will be better served by the Pixel, or the Galaxy, or the iPhone. But the One Mark IV is like the Mark III and II and I. It isn't meant for most people. It's for creators who want a mobile production and streaming studio that fits in their pocket, something they're likely to write off on their taxes anyway. And we'll just have to wait until September to see if the final product actually fits that particular bill. This first look was produced following a bit over two weeks with a pre-production Xperia 1 Mark IV prototype running pre-release software provided by Sony. But as always, I don't give manufacturers editorial input, copy approval rights, or even a sneak peek of my reviews. My judgments are mine and mine alone. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and let me know in the comments if you think I should revisit the 1 Mark IV after its September launch. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.